Hello, my lovelies. I hope you're doing really well today. Um, I'm in the studio at Highlight Crafts with our lovely Andrew in my ear, and we are filming for our digital Craftorium USB now. This USB has been brought to you before. It's called Eclectic Mix. It's exactly the same as you got before, so if you already own it, you don't need to buy it. But we didn't manage to get any education done last time we brought it to you because it was during lockdown, so that kind of kiboshed a lot of it. Um, so this time I've come up with some different projects and I wanted to introduce you to Cadence in this one because if you haven't tried it, I'm sure you've heard of it, but if you haven't tried it, this is a great way to start. And we're going to do, um, it's called Vinton, Vintage London Taxi project in the project. So when you get your booklet or your downloadable booklet, you'll see all the projects listed. Of course, you can mix and match them because they're just cutting files. But I just wanted to show you how you can go from a blank canvas like this, which for some people will be quite scary, to something that looks like that in not very much time at all. And it's super easy to do. So if you're somebody that's like, oh, I'm not sure I don't do messy crafting, not good at that, not interested, blah, blah, blah. Please just watch this video because I was exactly where you were as I stood outside the doors to go into the Cadence Training Academy in Turkey and went, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to enjoy this. But I absolutely loved it. We're going to put a shopping list for you in the description below so you'll be able to link through to the products. But this time I thought what I would do is do it as a portrait like this rather than a landscape. I'm not going to worry about the the um, London bus because that's really self-explanatory but we are going to address the background so the first thing that I've done is gone into canvas workspace just like we did on the card um, class that we did for this as well and I'm just going to grab the mouse and I can show you what I've already done so I sent in all four of the stencils from the USB so you've got this fabulous crown You've got the Union Jack, you've got London, and you've got Big Ben. Now, each one of these has a rectangle around them. So if you wanted to cut them as small as stencils, you can. However, I want them cut out of the 12 by 12 mylar that we sell under the Craftmaster brand. So I ungrouped them, removed the outside rectangle, and then regrouped the pieces together. Now, you can only do that in Canvas Workspace because it's already been grouped and you can't ungroup something that's already been grouped when it's on a USB. Now you can, but it's been saved as a grouped image, so you can't then ungroup it, unless you go into Canvas Workspace. So I've gone ahead and done that bit, and then I've resized them to the size that I want. So we've got our Big Ben and our crown on one of the um, stencils, because I still need space around to be able to use my paints and I'm just about to go ahead now and cut out the Union Jack and the London sign here. So I'm just going to move this down a little bit. I have resized these as well just so that you know um, to the size that I wanted for this and we're just going to cut these out. Now I said to you earlier when we did the card demo that when you're cutting mylar I want you to put your cut amount on um, one millimeter. And what I want to do now is just show you how you do that, in case you don't know, because I'm very aware that I use my scan and cut a lot and not everybody will know what everything does. So let's show you. So I'm gonna load this in. This is our 12 by 12 Craftmaster Mylar. It's a fabulous weight. If you want to paste through it, I would advise cutting two and gluing them together with a spray adhesive because it's quite a thin Mylar. Once you go any thicker, you've got to really get that blade through that mylar and it sometimes it misses slightly or it double cuts slightly because it's plastic. So best bet, thinner mylar, double it up if you need to, then there's no issues. So all I'm gonna do now is keep pressing OK until we get to the please select screen, which is here. And then I'm gonna ask it to cut. And once you open this screen up, you've then got this little um, spanner here. Please excuse the state of my nails. They are shocking. And I know they're shocking, but there's no point in getting them done yet because I'm going to play with paint. Auto for your cut pressure and cut amount on one millimetre. So not 0.1, but one millimetre. And then when I ask that to start, that's just going to go ahead and carry on cutting that out for us. It's going to take it three minutes. It's only going to need one pass because I've got it on the correct cut amount. So we're going to leave that to do this. Right. First things first. Let's bring in some rice paper. Now, 
This is also a Craftmaster product. We sell the rice paper in a um, pack, I want to say a pack of 10 sheets. Might be wrong, but I think it's a pack of 10 sheets. And we've printed this on an inkjet printer. Now, you're always, always going to get, when you put a water brush on the edge of a rice paper that you've printed, you're always going to get the ink moving. It's the nature of the beast because it's a water-based, you're adding water to a water-based ink, basically. So it's going to move itself, but that's okay because I'm all right with that. So we're going to work this way on this one. So I'm going to position that about there and you can put it on a slight angle if you want to, like this. I'm just going to see if I've got a sanding block before I start. Yes, I have, which is good. That's what we need. I always think I've got everything and then realise halfway through I've left something behind. So I'm just going to talk you through how you print rice paper and how you um, glue it on, tear it, etc. So I've got another sheet here. Now these, can you see I've dropped some water on here purposely. So it gives it that look, that look of old vintage paper. And all I did was literally got some on my hands like that and just flicked it onto the rice paper and let it do its thing. And it will start to pick up that ink and move it. So it's a really nice way of getting a distressed finish which I quite like. And every single, that means that every time your project's gonna be slightly different, which is cool too. Right, so brush. Normally I would use one of our water brushes, but I've left mine at home. So we're going to just use a brush with water. Oh, stencil's finished. <laughs> I love that. I love that I can just literally cut a stencil at the side of me. I think that's just brilliant. And then I'm just gonna run water across here now a decent amount of water you're not you know you're not drowning it just you're going along where that inky edge meets the white edge if you like now to do this on your printer we use a top loading printer at work an inkjet printer just a box standard hp one from your local supermarket um, and all i've done with this is used a little bit of cadence stencil spray on the back of a piece of copier paper and then glued the rice paper to the copy of paper and run it through my inkjet printer. And it's really easy to do, okay? You don't even really need to glue it down, but it's just, it's a good habit to get into, really. You don't need to, but I don't want to say you don't have to, and then you do it on your printer and it all goes horribly wrong, okay? So I'm just covering my back <laughs> and hopefully saving you buying a new printer. Right, let's just, while that's soaking in, let's just take this off here. Excuse the noise. Sorry, this is going to be awful. I am just going to rip this off now. A mylar, you can be quite tough with it, you know. I wouldn't try stretching it or scrubbing it or anything like that, but you can be quite brutal with it when you're getting it off the mat, as you can see. <laughs> Don't do gentle. Not a minute. Well, no, I do do gentle. That's not, that's not true. I know this is the, it's honestly, it's like fighting with them. Um, it always reminds me of Rod Hull and Emu, this, when he was on Parkinson. <laughs> when you're fighting with this to get it off the mat. Right, it's missed a little bit just there. So rather than yank, oh no, it doesn't, it's me. Right, so I've now got my stencil look with my Union Jack in London. But the great thing about having your own, cutting your own stencil is you've got all the waste bits as well. So you could put alcohol ink on these and colour them up. You can use them as masks to put back into your stencil, which we're going to do as we go along in this class too. Right, so got my stencils organised. Let's get this rice paper torn. Now look how it's, can you see, look, it looks like oxidised, doesn't it? It's brilliant. It's a really good technique. And there's nothing you can do to stop that, um, that water moving that ink, unfortunately. But I do think it's nice as an effect, so make it work for you. You know, there's some things we can change, there's some things we can't. And the things that you can't, you either accept or you just, you know, you get find a work around, don't you? And I think for this, it's perfect. The other thing that I will do diff slightly differently is, um, if you've seen David use rice papers, he tends to put the glue on the back of the rice paper. That means you're adding more liquid to it. So what I'm gonna do with this is add the um, Decoupage Plus the matte decoupage plus, and I'll go through all the products with you as we use them, onto the actual canvas itself, rather than onto the back of the paper. So the first thing I do is just have a look and see where I want this to lay out. So I'm gonna put a line of water right down the middle of this um, 
this rice paper now because I want a little bit of it at the top and a little bit of it on the bottom. And these are also on your USB. So if, when you go onto your USB and you open up a project, you'll have SVG files, you'll have stencils, you'll have papers, and you will also have charisma. So, you know, you've got lots to be going on and we've made sure that everything works perfectly together but can also mix and match for you too. So if you've already got this USB, it's a chance now for you to get it out of the box with the education and maybe craft along, which would be lovely, wouldn't it? Right, so I'm going to have this in the middle here and I'm going to have it on a slight angle because I quite like that look. I'm then going to put this one behind it or I can put it over the top. It doesn't matter, I quite like it over the top. And then the other piece is going to go at the bottom. Okay, like that. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to might stick these two pieces down first because then you'll see that edge through there and that might look quite cool. So we want decoupage plus matte for this. So this is the Cadence decoupage glue. Um, it's water-based, fast drying glue, can be used with any paper, fabric and especially rice paper decoupage. Brush a thin coat on the back of the cutout, smooth in place, let dry and when dry and clear, 10 to 20 minutes repeat. So I'm going to do something a little bit different than that, just because I, just because I can, basically. So I'm going to take a brush. I'm just going to see if I've got my finer brush with me somewhere. Yes, I have here. I took all my stuff home this weekend and then it's like moving house coming back <laughs> into work. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put it onto the board. Okay, so I'm going to put a nice thin coat and I'm going to do it a bit at a time. So I'm going to do the top bit first. So make sure that you've got enough glue on here. You don't want to be going back in and having to take it off and start again. So just get a decent amount of glue on, but not thick. Then I'm going to put this on here like this. Okay, and I'm just going to press that down and I'm going to use my decoupage glue to go over the top. Now, once you've gone over the top with your decoupage glue, that ink isn't going anywhere. Okay, so this is how you seal it in so that it doesn't keep moving that ink. But I do love that effect. I think it's really cool. So I'm just going to make sure I've got a nice coating of this and all the edges like that. And I'm just going to pull those feathery edges out. You'll get a slight movement of the ink, but once this is dry, then you won't. Okay, so don't worry if you get a little bit on your brush, it's fine. That's normal. Right, now I'm going to dry this off. So this is going to get a little bit noisy, but I like to dry it off in a, as a layer because otherwise if I put another one over the top, I've then got to get through the top one to get the bottom one dry. And that's just ridiculous. So I'm going to do it this way. So nice hot heat gun, first of all. And then we're just going to dry this off because we want this to be really nice and dry before we start adding paint to it. I'm just going to give this a good blast and you want it to be touch dry, okay? You can use a hair dryer for this if you haven't got a heat gun. Um, the only time I wouldn't recommend using a hair dryer is if you, well, I wouldn't, you can't use a hair dryer for embossing powders because there's a difference between drying something and melting something. A hair dryer is just there, so it will just blow the embossing powder off your project anyway. And then the bit that's still stuck to the ink, if you're lucky, it's not, it's just going to dry the ink out really quickly. It's not going to melt that powder. But for something like this, heat gun, hair dryer, just not what my mum once did and used my dad's paint stripper. That's not a good idea. <laughs> crazy woman. You can see where I get my craziness from, can't you? Right, so I'm now going to take my sanding block. I've got the wrong one out after all that. And I'm just going to sand this off. Now, normally I would wait for this to dry completely, but just because we're doing this as a live class, I am just going to sand this back because I want to, I want to be able to do every step for you. That's what I mean by a live class, rather than, you know, on Zoom. But I just think it's a really nice way of getting some old, you know, the older USBs either back out there for you or if you've bought it before, giving you some new ideas, which is always good, isn't it? And the education's free, which is even better. Right, let's go in and do the bottom piece now. So exactly the same process here. 
and I think sometimes it's good, you know, you can fast forward through bits, but actually sometimes it's good to see it from start to finish because because I'm not known or it's not something that I don't do mixed media every day. It's not my main thing. Um, I've really, really, really enjoyed it. And I think sometimes when you see somebody that doesn't do it a lot and they're kind of on your level of mixed media, you know, if you're a beginner, it's perfect because it just gives you the confidence to have a go. In other words, if Mel can do it, I can do it, that kind of thing. Because <laughs> I was genuinely scared when I went, well, not scared, what's the word? Anxious, I guess, when I went to um, Turkey to do the training academy with Cadence because I went with a group of fabulous ladies, but they were all into, massively into their mixed media and I had no idea what half of the stuff was. And I had a choice. I could either be miserable for the next week and just not enjoy any of it or throw yourself in and just see what you get. And that's exactly what I did. So, and it was, it was just brilliant. So hopefully we can pass a little bit of this on to you. Right, so heat this one now. Let's get this dry. that stencil out of the way because we don't want to get that heat level on mylar it'll warp it and we want our stencils to be nice and flat if you're only doing you know if you're doing it as a one-off and you don't want to put it out of mylar you could just cut it out of card and use that um, if you wanted a thicker stencil you could use doe flex because doe flex is a little bit more forgiving on the blade than mylar is especially at the thick and it's thicker the mylar is just brilliant, I have to say. <laughs> it took us ages and ages and ages. We kept getting sample after sample after sample after sample and nothing was right. And then Stephanie spent about 20 minutes online and found a place um, that makes mylar in Blackburn, which is like 15 minutes from my house door to door. So it was like, gosh, we've gone to all this, all these hours of searching and trying to find it and trying to find the right one and a good one and all the rest of it. And then it's literally on my doorstep. Didn't even know it existed. But I do now. <laughs> so if I ever run out and I'm at home, I know where to go. <laughs> I think they'll lock the doors after the first time I go. They'll be like, not letting her back in again. Right, so let's get rid of all this excess. You can just tuck this round if you want to. And just, you know, have it as a, just wrap round if that's, if you prefer it. And you will make sure that this is completely dry before you do this. Okay, this is, it's pulling a little bit because I'm asking it to do it before it's completely dry. But it's all right, we can, we'll manage. Right, so I've got my top and my bottom. So now I want to put the middle piece in, which is here. And this has already got a union jack on it. It's also got writing on it. So just make sure that when you're doing this, you've got your writing the right way up. Just saying. Because <laughs> if you don't, that's what you'll see. And you will be able to see these feathered edges through here. But we're going to paint a big union jack across here anyway. And I just thought this would be really nice for a teenager's bedroom or a man's study or, you know, anyone that you know that loves to travel. I know our Andrew's going off to Switzerland for two weeks. And he's not taking me with him, which is really rude. He's going to bring back chocolate, which is all I can ask for, isn't it? Swiss chocolate. Delicious. Right, so let's get some of this decoupage glue on here. And you'll see now it stopped bleeding. So there's a little bit of... A, it's a bit rusty on my white canvas, but it's no, it's not doing this anymore because it's got that seal on it now. So I'm just going to position this where I want it, like so. Press it down from the middle out, and then just go back over with your glue and work from the middle out like this, because then any air bubbles that you've got in, you can always lift it. Look, it doesn't tear when you lift it, so you can always lift it if you think, oh, I need a bit more glue there. But if you can get it done in one go, even better. But it's not the end of the world if you don't, okay? Because you can lift it. So just it's all these little hints and tips that I really wanted to, to give you. And it's really interesting because when we go out and about, we do things like crafting lives or we're off to Exeter soon to a show down there. 
it's really interesting because when you're a demonstrator who uses a product all the time, like I use Scan & Cut, sometimes you miss out the basics. And it's really interesting when I come and meet you guys because you ask me loads of questions, which I love because I love solving a problem. I love a, not a problem as in the machine's not working, but a problem as in I can't get it to do this or I can't get it to do that. And I love that because it makes me understand what you guys need in shows or, you know, in classes, which and it's, it's invaluable, really. So I just thought if we did this start to finish, it would be good for you to just see a novice, shall we say, at it. Because I am, I'm still, well, we're all learning, aren't we? We're all learning every day. But it's, it's nice to just pick up a product and do something with it rather than just seeing it on a shelf or enviously watching David do it because the Cadence products are just magic. That's the only word I can use for them. They're just magic. They really are very, very, very clever and very good at what they do. So if you've never tried it, give it a go. And it's Cadence Month. So September 2023 is our first Cadence Month where you get a 20% discount, I think, of everything Cadence on highlightcrafts.com, which is fabulous. Um, and I love that. And don't ask me if I've been shopping because I'm not telling you. <laughs> right, this now ne needs drying even more now because I can feel that that's still... It's not sticky, but you'll, it's got a... And it's not, I can't even describe it, it's not even tacky, it's just, you don't feel that it's still a little bit damp. Like the waistband on your jeans when you drive them over the radiators, but the waistbands are a little bit too thick. Feels a bit like that. Right, there we go. Okay, so that's what I would call touch dry now. Okay, and we're going to just get rid of these edge bits here. So again, I would recommend you leave this to dry before you do this. But just because I can. <laughs> yeah, just because I can. My mum will be saying now, just because you can, Melanie, doesn't mean you should. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because you can eat that full bog of Maltesers, Melanie, doesn't mean you should. No, but I'm going to, <laughs> is the answer to that. Right, let's get this sanded off now. So a sanding block just from your local DIY store. We'll sell those. Really inexpensive to get hold of. Um, I can't even tell you what grit it is. I want to say 60, just because it says 60 on the block, but that might not mean anything. Right, so we've now got our canvas covered. So the next thing I want to do is just go around the edges and create a frame. So for that, I'm going to use um, dark brown. So it's H018. It's dark brown and it's a hybrid acrylic. So a hybrid acrylic means that it will go on any surface and be permanent. So you can put it on glass, you can put it on plastic, you can put it on ceramic, you can put it on wood, on paper, on all those different mediums. It's a fabulous product. And I'm going to use a stencil brush for this. Now then, am I gonna use this one or am I gonna use this one? So me being naughty, forgot to clean my brushes. These were all nicely domed, forgot to clean the brushes. Went rock hard, tried brush cleaner, wasn't shifting it. Tried white spirit, still wasn't wasn't um, fixing it. So I chopped them down because <laughs> I wasn't throwing them away. These are Royal Langnickel stencil brushes and they're fabulous and we actually distribute Royal Langnickel now so we'll see if we can get some of these in for you. We do have a nice range of paint brushes now so we have the wider ones that you've been seeing me use. We've got this and we've got our obviously our in the studio painting ones and we've also got some Royal Langnickel ones. Now these with the purple handle you just need to break the bristles and by that I mean just get rid of that size that's on there that keeps them all perfectly straight, just get rid of that. So I'm just now swirling, okay? So nothing that you haven't done with an ink before. We're just now using paint instead of using ink. And there isn't really, to be fair, much of a difference when you're using it. The techniques are 
kind of the same. And I always think when you're trying something new, if you can have something that's familiar, even if it's just the way that you swirl your ink or your paint, it just helps you settle a little bit. I know when I first started using um, like Tim Holtz Distress Crayons and things like that, and something that I'd never really used before, just having the names that were familiar. And it's only psychological, it's, it's crazy really, but it does make a difference. So yeah, just think about, think of this as ink and think of this as a, a blending brush. And all I'm doing is just literally pushing this into this canvas, getting the edges in at the same time. So we haven't got any white edges around the sides because we don't want that. And then if I feel that I've got too much somewhere or I just want to soften it, just go back in just with the paint that's left on your brush and just soften that out. You can go in with a little bit of a spray bottle if you want to and wipe, or wipe some off with a damp cloth. But actually, you know what? That looks pretty good to me. So we've now got our canvas on there. Now I'm just looking at it on your screen and it looks much darker. So I'm just going to bring this down and I'm literally just dry brushing what's left on my brush now. And you know what, you won't even need, you won't really see this when everything else is on, but I am a bit like that. I need to know that I don't really do, that'll do. Do you know what I mean? I like to make sure that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it properly. Right, so that's that bit. Now, any paint that's left over, I'm just going to leave out because we might need to come back to the brown at some point. But what we're going to do now is use our Union Jack stencil. And this is a nice big whopping stencil now, I like this. So this is going to go right in the middle here and we're going to make this quite bold. And then I think we're going to have London at the top. So I might bring this down a little bit further. Now, because I'm working on rice paper and because it is still a little bit damp, and because I don't want my stencil to move, I'm going to use this product, Cadence Stencil Spray. You will have heard David watch lyrical about this and I've watched lyrical about it. We all use it. It is by far the best stencil spray that I've ever used. And if you remember in the 90s, I don't know what it was like in your house, but in my house, if you stood still long enough, you got stenciled <laughs> because it was everywhere. We used to stencil the floor, stencil the walls, stencil the ceilings, all sorts going on. So just make sure that when you're using this, you want a nice, light, thin layer, okay? It's like the finest hairspray you can ever imagine. It doesn't clog, it doesn't string. It's a really good product. You will want to use it either outside or over a bin because it is an adhesive. So I'm just gonna pop this stencil into the bin here and just a light spray. So literally one, two, three, a couple of times like that. That's more than enough. It does have an odour to it. So if you're worried about odours, obviously it's a solvent based product. So just be aware of that. But I love this product. It's interesting, isn't it? They do all these amazing things. And this and the dry foam, which we're going to use later on. This are two of my favourite products that Cadence do because it just solves a problem. It's really good stuff. Right, so now I've got my adhesive on here. I am now going to position London where I want it to be, which is going to be up there. So I then know that I want to have my Union Jack pretty central. So I'm looking at the sides of my canvas here compared to the sides of the stencil. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to press it down firmly. Okay. So make sure there's enough adhesive on there because once I start, I don't want this to lift at all. Right, I'm just going to take that off. I'm going to put a little bit more spray on those weak points in that stencil because I don't want it to go underneath. It doesn't matter if it does because it's, it's kind of a grungy, arty look anyway. So it doesn't really matter. But if we can get it right, let's get it right, hey? So reposition this again. Don't ever be scared of doing that. It doesn't leave any residue behind. So I'm going to have London there. So I'm going to have my Union Jack about there. Right, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just bring it back in my mat from my scan and cut for when I cut this stencil. And I need to have this in front of me because I don't have pictures in my head. 
I am shocking at remembering what colour goes where on the Union Jack. Really bad. Which is really bad, isn't it? But it's what I am. So I'm going to put that back in there. And I'm not going to worry about spraying these bits down. I'm going to put this in here, like so. And these will just, you'll almost hear it click back in because it's cutting one pass. It's giving you a really clean finish to it. So I'm blocking out all the bits now that are going, going to be blue and leaving just the red. We're not going to do the white bit because that's the background which makes it look a little bit more arty. It's not like you've just cut it out and stuck it on. You know, you've painted it, which is super cool. So next few bits. And this is why I love cutting my own stencils because you get all these waste bits. So instead of having to now go in and get tape, making sure that you've got the correct tape that then doesn't pull the rice paper off and mess with the glue, it's just so much easier because you can literally just drop these back in. I love it. It's so cool. And because my mat's really nice and sticky, there's a little bit of residue left on the back of this mylar, just enough for me to be able to um, stick these back in and not worry about taping it down. Right, I've got that right. So all that is red. Right, let's go. So I'm going to leave that stencil brush there and I'm going to try and avoid that blob of brown paint that I've got there. You never know where it might end up. <laughs> Bit random. And then I've got a really nice bright red. Because a lot of this is going to be quite distressed, even these, this rice, so this is one of your um, charisma that's on there, but I've just printed it on rice paper because I can. There you go. Right, so I want some of this red now. I'm going to make sure that my stencil's pressed down perfectly. So this is crimson red. The code is H053. And I'm just going to put some of this out. So giving it a really good shake because you will find that some of the um, binders in it just separate a little bit. So always, always give it a really good shake before you start. And then I'm going to go in with a stencil brush. So this really nice bright red, proper crimson red. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to do lots of light taps like this. So I'm not swirling because I'm using a stencil and I don't want to swirl it and risk getting any paint underneath that stencil. And because I've masked off, I'm not worrying about getting any red where the blue is or blue where the red is, which I did first time round. And actually, what I did was put a little bit, pulled a little bit of the blue through the red and a little bit of red through the blue and it just knocked it back a little bit. So we'll see how we get on with this. And then we might do it as a little bit of a, a technique. So just keep going. You will see the rice paper through but we are going to do a second coat of this. But I just wanted you to see how from one project, you could create loads of different things. And we also sell um, printable shrink plastic now. So you could do some of your embellishments on shrink plastic and have real proper dimension on your canvases if that's what you wanted to do. We also sell like a printable canvas. So that would be quite nice to do like, um, printable fabric that would be good so check out the whole craft master range because we do a lot of things that you might not even know about which is always exciting isn't it which is why I like having a look through the website and seeing what you can find I love doing that that's why I get so many parcels delivered to my house right I'm going to dry this off so I'm just on a lower heat setting this time so lower heat setting because I'm working over my law and I don't want it to walk the mylar. So as long as you do this quite quickly and you just don't use a very high heat, you will get away with doing this. But please keep the heat gun moving. Don't do what you do when you're embossing and hold it still. Keep that heat gun moving because you don't want to warp that stencil because once mylar's warped, plastic, you'll not get it straight again. You'll not get it flat. And we want to make sure that we do. Right, so... Happy with that. And the reason that we do that is so that when you put your next layer of paint on, it doesn't pick up the paint that you put on first. Because there's nothing more frustrating than trying to layer up paint when it's still wet. Because it just moves the bit underneath and you don't get anywhere. There's also a point, I think, on most mixed media projects where you have to get through the paint barrier. And you just have to keep going with it. And... 
you will get to a stage where you look at it and you think, oh, this is awful. Keep going, keep going, because that next layer or the layer after that might be the one that just brings everything together. Don't be scared. You know, it's a bit of paint and a bit of paper. Just have a play. Just believe in your own abilities because I never thought I would be doing anything like this. I thought scan and cook, you know, nice clean crafting, colouring in with alcohol markers, all of that. Now, any excuse. <gasps> and now we've brought Digital Craft Orion back, which is super exciting. We've got the perfect platform to be able to really get to grips with it. Right, so I've got that there. What I'm going to do now is just take out these pieces of this stencil. Now you can save these, clean them up if you want to and save them. Oh, right in the brown paint. I did tell you, didn't I? Knew that was going to go right in the brown paint. Even though it's sat there looking at me going, yeah, I'm wet and I'm brown and you don't want to go anywhere near that. Still. Anyway, yeah, who cares? Right, so we've got this bit now. So what you could do is take this off, clean your stencil, put it back on, and then mask off the red bits and go in for the blue. But because I am who I am, I'm just going to do it <laughs> because I can. I know that's my thing that it's usually when my husband, when I'm driving, my husband doesn't drive, right? So I'm driving, he's like, why are you going this way? Like, because I can. <gasps> yeah, but if it, I'm like, Mick, I'm driving, stop. Just let me drive. Did it the other day when we went to pick up our new puppy. Drove me crazy. Drove me crazy. Drives me crazy. Right, so brush. My producer has just said he likes it when he drives Sophie around because she just falls asleep because she suffers from car sickness because he gets some peace and quiet. I'll tell you something. He won't say that if Sophie was sat here. I'll tell you that right now. He <laughs> said he would, he'd just pay for it later. Yeah, fair enough. Right, brushes. So I've got a flat brush. I think this was, this is one of my dad's old ones, I think. I collect, collected paint brushes over the years. So I'm going to go in with a thinner brush. And now I'm just literally tapping this in. Okay, so I'm just getting plenty of paint on my brush and not doing this with it, just literally pressing it down. A bit more. Like that, right, so that's the first blue bit done. And we are doing this quite bright, but we are going to knock this back after and make it a little bit darker. Now, I'm going over here with a little bit of the blue and I'm, I will end up picking up some of the red, but I'm all right with that, actually, because it does just give it an extra little bit of something. I don't know what that something is, but it does give it a little extra bit of something. Get these mylar pieces out now like that and then we can go in with our other triangles like this and I never know really what I, I always used to plan a project out and think right I'll do this this and this what I tend to do now is cut everything and then just play because the stencils are never going to go to waste you can wash these and reuse them time and time and time again when you're washing them, just put them flat in your sink, put some washing up liquid on them and just a soft sponge or even your stencil brush. Just be aware if you've got some really fine stencils with a lot of detail, just be aware of which way that detail's been cut. So if you've got, for example, this bit here on the D, I wouldn't brush up with that because it will lift that and flick it up. And like you say, once, you, once, plast once plastic's bent, you're not getting it flat again. So just be aware when you are cleaning your stencils that you don't go too mad. But I just find warm soapy water is perfect. And then just leave them to air dry. Don't be tempted to dry them off with kitchen towel or a, a tea towel because you'll get all the bits of fibres on them and that's really annoying. So just leave them to dry naturally. If you've got like two taps on your sink, you'll find usually there's a place in the stencil that you can hang it off the top. So that's what I do. I let them dry. I used to put them on top of the arga just to dry out, but we had to turn the arga off because it was costing us a fortune in gas because it was on all the time. So I've lost my arga for now, which isn't good. But we've got an air fryer. Oh, Mick loves the air fryer. So he now, he now um, 
who now does lots of cooking, which is even better when I'm busy. Right, so let's get this dried off now and then we can do another coat of the blue, see if we need it. So let's just dry this off. And let's see where we're at, what we've got. I'm not bothered if I've got thicker bits of paint in areas and thinner bits in others. I'm not worrying about that. And actually, if you once we've taken the stencil off, what I'll do is I might go back over the paint and just get it to bubble a little bit because that adds more texture, which is really nice too. And this is going to look really bright next to um, the rest of it. But as I said, we're going to knock it back and we're going to add other things over the top of this. So it'll all look fabulous when it's done, she says, with the fingers crossed. No, it will. It'll look great. Right. So just another coat of the blue now because I want to make sure that we've got a nice coverage to start with and then we can start knocking bits back and distressing bits etc etc okay so let's use up this blue paint because we've got it out if you ever put too much paint out which I tend to all the time because I always underestimate the quality of the pigment in the paint always think I'll need a bit, little bit more than I actually do. You can put it back in. Now there, I've gone right over that red there with that blue, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to wipe it off like that, and then we'll deal with that when we've taken the stencil off. So don't worry, you know, don't think, oh, it's ruined. Just keep going. See what you get at the end. That's the bit that I like. See what you get at the end. Right, paint straight into water, paint me straight into water, and then I'm going to lift my stencil off. Okay, that's not bad. I'm all right with that. We've got a little bit of uh, seepage going on, but not nothing that I need to worry about. But how bright and bold is that? I mean, that really does stand out on there. Right, quite really good blast now with the paint, with the heat gun. I want to make sure this is completely dry. So after I've done this, I'm gonna do some more with rice paper and then we'll make sure that this is completely dry. But just by putting this level of heat on, you see it starts to bubble a little bit. Don't worry if it does that, it's, it, it lifts the rice paper a little bit because the glue isn't permanent, isn't completely wet, uh, dry, but it's quite a nice effect. And if you've got thicker areas, it almost bubbles a little bit, which is nice too quite like it. This for me is that pain barrier where I have to go through this to make sure that this is all going to get knocked back and it's all going to look like it should. Got a little bit of blue there, I'm not going to worry about that. It doesn't have to be perfect. And the only difference between this and doing a card is that you're using paint instead of using ink. That's it. That's the only difference. Right, I'm going to pop that to one side right now just to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to bring these in. I've still got loads of paint here. So I am going to just take the time to take the lid off the red. And somewhere I have a palette knife, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Let's have a look in my little bag of tricks. No, probably got everything but. Right, so let's grab a little bit of this mylar then. See, this is me hacking into me. Hacking <laughs> into me, me tools. I love the fact that you're, the machine that you spent a considerable amount of money on is now creating tools for you too, which is fab. Because it can be the size that you want and the shape that you want when you want it, which I love. Right. Oh, grab a bit of tissue, clean that off. So that's the red paint back. I'm going to leave the brown out again, just because I know that I'm going to want to come in and do a bit more with that. Right, so um, brush for the water is here. So again, now this, because this was um, a Charisma, I have to think about when we did this and what the name was for it at the time. So it was Charisma. Um, they're very close together these and there is a bleed around them because they were they're meant to be printed off and cut out and scan and cut so we put a bleed around things to make sure that if you didn't line it up perfectly it really didn't matter so what I'm going to do is split this into three so I'm going to tear the whole thing out first and then go back in so when you're tearing it hold it with your finger and thumb so your fingers underneath your thumbs on top 
and just start to pull it. And then once you've got that first bit done, you can then just turn it round, put your finger on top of it and pull gently, okay? And don't worry about the bleed bit because even if we leave that on, we're not gonna see it once we've applied this to our project. So I'm all right with that too. Right, so let's pull these back. You can tell it was it's a charisma because it's got the name at the bottom. <laughs> but I just thought, why not paint them on rice paper? You know, it's just an image at the end of the day, isn't it? It's not anything that has to be printed on a certain substrate. You can do what you want with it. But I do like it. I think it's really cool. Right, so let's get some more water through the middle of these. And again, you will get that ink moving. You know, we talked about that at the beginning. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It's going to happen. So just embrace it. You're not going to be able to stop it. So we're just going to go with what we've got. I think sometimes as well, when you limit yourself to just a few products, you become more creative with it. Right, let's bring this back in now and see where we want these. So I know I've got London going at the top, but I kind of want one of those there. And I kind of want to want, I kind of want that, I think, going through. Now this is different to the one that I've done before. So we'll just go and see what we get, don't we? Right, so back to our mat decoupage and our brush here. See, it's starting. The mess is starting already on my desk. <laughs> Honestly, I can't work in a tidy space. It drives me crazy. I have to have stuff everywhere. I always tidy up when I've finished. Although if I am in the middle of a project, I'll walk away and tidy up when I've finished it. But yeah, I can't. I'm not good at I need all my stuff around me. Right, so we're putting this on. We're going directly over that paint that we've just done. And we're doing exactly what we did at the beginning with the rice paper. We've put the glue onto the actual canvas itself. And now we're just sealing these in place. Okay, and I'm just going around these edges, making sure that we get rid of all that excess. Right, let's go in here now. And you know what? If you make a mistake along the way, and trust me, <laughs> over the years I've made plenty, just Keep, either keep going, don't give up, find some, think of something new to do with it. But it's a learning curve, you know, especially when you're trying something new, like different mediums, you've just got to learn from it. You know, I'm going to do some acrylic paint pouring stuff for you. And I've learned lessons already, you know, go on YouTube and have a look and see what other things we're teaching you. And it's just, it's a really great resource. And I'm really pleased that we're quite a big part of that now which is great right so I've got that one there I'm going to pop another one there so I've got one on an angle one slightly less angled but not dead straight and then another one going in the opposite direction so I'm balancing out that three so even though I'd done one canvas this is going to look different a because it's portrait instead of landscape and b because I'm doing slightly different things with it and that's okay because I don't, I don't like doing the same thing over and over and over again. I get bored really quickly. I'm like, right, I've done that. What's next? Next. <laughs> so let's turn that back over. Just get those because it had creased up a little bit and I don't want that. It wouldn't matter because it would give me texture. But I kind of like this as it is. Right, so I've now got those. Now you can see now how that started to knock that back straight away. But what I'm also going to do, and you can also see the Union Jack through the Union Jack, which is quite cool. So sorry about this, but I'm gonna to have to heat it again. I'd rather you sew it from start to finish than step by step, because then you know how long it takes to dry it, you know what kind of heat level you need, etc., etc. So we're going to dry this off and if you're working alongside with me this will be quite nice because we'll both be drying at the same time
that. Now it's still a bit tacky. I'm going to keep going because we've had a quite a decent amount of glue on there. So I need to make sure that that is dry properly. I can say I would say walk away from this now for about half an hour and just let it naturally dry. Even if even after you've blasted this, just let it naturally dry. Because we're gonna add we don't like these bits around the edges, so we're just gonna soften that out with our brown paint again. A bit more down here. see where we're at now so I'm going to bring back in my stencil brush that had my brown paint on and you can see most of it's dried on the bristles now but I'm all right because I've got I can just reactivate that so all I'm doing now is picking up the tiniest amount of brown ink and just swirling it on that brush getting it right into those bristles and then very delicately I'm just going to go around the edges so where those feathered edges are I'm just going to soften them back down I'm going over the top of my painted Union Jack because I want it all to just blend in. So I'm making this a little bit more grungy now, a little bit more knocked back, a little bit more worn, a bit more vintage, shabby, whatever word you use for it, I don't mind. It's just, it's just knocking back that bright colour. Whereas if we'd started with a darker colour and then you knocked it back, you would have kind of lost it eventually. So I'm just literally going around and just tiniest amount of, of paint. I'm not worrying about bristles falling out my brush because I've had these brushes for donkey's years. And just do the job. So I'm just now just softening those lines that I've just put in. There we are. So it looks quite, um, reminds me of something that you would have seen in the Blitz, I think. <laughs> that sounds really dark, doesn't it? But you know what I mean? That really dark, sooty London, I guess. You get that in any big city, don't you? I mean, somebody says to me now, New York, I can smell it. I can't picture it because I don't have pictures, but I can smell it. <laughs> well, the smoke coming up from the subways and the hot dog vendors and... Yeah, I can smell it now. Right, so we've now got this. So now we're getting really quite grungy, aren't we? Which I quite like. So again, I'm going to leave that brown paint out and I'm just going to blast this off and then we're going to get with our fancy paints. And just blast this off just to make sure that you're getting drying those layers. Even though you dry brushed it, you still want to make sure that you're just blasting off in between your layers. Like I say, a hair dryer will do if you haven't got a heat gun. Just a bit there, you feel it. There we go. Right, so now what we want is we want our London and we want our crown and our Big Ben. So let's have a look where we're going to position these. Just lost my postage stamps. So I think Big Ben can go there. I think London can go up there, which will look quite cool up there. And then we'll decide where the crown's gonna go afterwards. So what I'm going to do, just because I don't have time to go and wash my stencil, is just chop this bit off. Don't do this when you're doing it at home because you really do want some space around your wording but just because we are where we are and we're doing what we're doing i'm going to do it like this so let's lose that mat let's get some stencil spray on the back of here because even though i put it on before i just want to make sure that i've got enough there's nothing worse than getting halfway through in your stencil just lifting it's annoying i don't like being annoyed so let's do this right london so I'm going to try and get this, I'm going to get this straight because I've got the other things wonky. This will make this stand out. So if you have everything on one page wonky and one thing that's straight, the straight is the one thing that you will see and vice versa. So if you have everything um, straight and one thing wonky, the wonky things you see. Now that can be a bad thing, but it can also be a good thing because it means that you're in charge of who sees what when especially on a scrapbook page. It's really interesting when you start to do that. 
So I've got London, I'm just going to reposition that because that's not quite central and that will drive me crazy. So having said that, I've let go and I'm a bit more random. Still like straight lines. So I'm looking at the top of my stencil because I know that that was cut straight. And hopefully. Right, so I'm going back in with the dark brown, okay? And we're going to do the dark brown layer to create a drop shadow, first of all. So lots of tapping, light tapping, picking up a bit more of that brown ink and just going through and just popping this down here like so. And just go in. And there's nothing to stop you, you know, making these stencils. So you could put all four icons on one 12 by 12 sheet and sell it if you wanted to. That would be really cool, wouldn't it? You know, if you want to start a little side hustle, help pay the bills, that would be good. You'll need a bit of that, don't we? So let's go in and just tap this down. Okay, let's see what we've got. It's quite difficult to see in these lights. Right, let's dry that off. I might just give that another coat just to make sure that I've got a nice dark. So back to my lowest heat because I'm working over the top of my law. If you get too close, you'll see your stencil start to lift like it did there. So I'll move back and keep that heat gun moving. Okay, you don't want that. Just lift this up and then I can see better. Oh, actually, we've got quite a decent coverage there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is lift this stencil. So you can see we've got London on there, but it doesn't stand out enough. So I'm just going to stand up. I'm going to position it back to where it was, like that. And then when I've got it absolutely bang on perfect, I'm going to lift it and I'm just going to move it over to the left a little bit. So left and down a little bit and we're creating a drop shadow now. So that brown is gonna become our shadow. So then I'm gonna press that down firmly again, like that. And then I'm going to bring in one of our sponge daubers. Now we also sell these now, which are great. Little sponge dauber. And I'm gonna bring in a Dora Hybrid Metallic. So I'm just gonna give this a shake and then I can show you exactly what this looks like. So there are hybrid paints, there are hybrid metallics, and then there are Dora hybrid metallics. So the hybrid, hybrid regular paint is a flat paint, like the red, white, and blue that we used. Then you can use, have something like the Topaz, which is a Dora metallic, which are beautiful, I have to say, they give you a really nice shimmer and shine. But the Dora hybrid metallics are my favorite because they have proper crushed metal flake in them and they are super reflective. I mean, they are just beautiful. They're amazing in a, one of our spritz bottles. So I would say one part paint to three or four parts extender. So the extender that keeps your paint open longer in a spritz bottle like this. Give it a shake and you've got your own spritzers, but that spritzer matches everything else that you've got, which is super cool. So champagne this, one of my favourite colours, I love this. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to dab this. Okay, so don't keep going over the same area again and again and again. Go once because you can always go back over it. All you're going to do with this, if you keep going over the same place, is lift that paint and then you'll get frustrated. So once over, just keep going, keep moving and you'll end up with a really good finish. And I do like, I'm some, I used to look at these sponges and think, oh yeah, no, they're for kids. Actually, they're really good. They're really good because they just give that really nice light pressure. So if you haven't tried them, like we said, we're going to put the all the descriptions of the products in the, or, or all the names of the products in the link under the video. So you'll be able to go and treat yourself. I'm very pleased to hear that a lot of you have bought the Mixian glue and the Tilson um, flake, well it's not flake, it's it's the most amazing gilding product I've ever seen um, since we did the video. So if you haven't seen that, go and check that out because that's cool too. Right, I'm going to blast this off. 
and then I'm going to go in with another, another coat. So again, keep it moving, keep that gun moving. And I think it's nice sometimes when you're new to, new to something that somebody who doesn't do it all the time, like David's product knowledge is just phenomenal. I don't know those products as well as David does. I couldn't go on air and tell you what they're made up of and how the compounds work, etc., etc. What I love about them is they do the job and they do it brilliantly. And, you know, anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. You know, this is going back to school with a potato, isn't it? Just putting paint on a potato and pressing it down. Everybody can do it. Just have a play. Don't be scared of it. Because your biggest block will be your head. Just have a go and see what you come up with. Because I absolutely loved it. And paint pouring, oh dear, that is a definitely a new addiction. Every time it came into my craft room over the weekend, it was like, what have you done now? I'm like, look, I've done all these. <laughs> There's just canvases drying everywhere. But it's great fun. Right, let's take this off now. We should have our nice bright gold London with that slight drop shadow which I think is super cool. So now that's starting to lift it. We've got quite a lot of dark on there. So we needed something that was going to be lighter. So that's that bit. I'm just gonna give it a proper dry now. Now that stencil's off, because now I can up that heat. And sometimes if you hold it still long enough, if you've got like an excess paint, because you sponged it, it will give you a slight texture. So let your heat gun just really bubble that paint. And it's really cool technique and it does look like your rice paper's lifting don't worry once it cools down it all settles again it's just melting that glue underneath and lifting it but it gives it a really nice texture I do like doing this kind of thing it's super cool right so this now could be it could be that you've been to london for a weekend and you've got tickets and you've got i don't know a uh, a brochure from a play or you've been to the theatre or London Eye tickets or dungeons whatever you could then start to build this up and this could be a project that could go on your wall or in an album depending on what kind of thing you do right let's do our big Ben next so we're going to do this in exactly the same way that we did the London but we're going to do it the opposite way around so I'm going to start with the gold and then put the brown on top because then that will make it look like the like it's the lights glinting off it. So I'm going to put this stencil in the bin just so that I can spray it. Sounds really bad that, doesn't it? I'm going to put this stencil in the bin. I'm not putting the stencil in the bin. I'm looking for this stencil spray. Here we go. So stencil spray again from Cadence. Really, really good product. Can't recommend that highly enough. It is brilliant. Don't need a lot. Use it outside or in a well ventilated area because it is a, it is a, a solvent based product right so where do i want big ben i think i want big ben about there and then i think they want the crown there and then we can do the london taxi or the bus or whichever you prefer you can put underneath so i'm going to have this down here like that give that a nice press down and this time we're going to go in with the champagne first so i'm sticking with the same color because if you get too many different colours in, it starts. you start to look for the colour rather than looking at the image itself. And it gets a little bit muddy. So we just stick with a few colours. So I've used red. Well, I've used crimson red. I've used ultramarine, the blue. I've used the dark brown. I'm now using the um, champagne for the Dora Hybrid Metallic. And I think that's all we've used so far, paint-wise. So I'm not chucking loads of stuff at it. I'm just doing a little bit. You can see how thick and creamy this paint is. Look at it. It's like, oh, it's lovely. It's just lovely. <laughs> Look at that. My dad was always into paint. Never thought I would be. And now Matthew is too, which is amazing, painting his little Warcraft figures. Loving it. <laughs> Never thought he'd do that, ever. He had enough of crafting when he lived at home and he was covered in glitter all the time because I worked in the attic <laughs> and glittered t-shirts every day. Used to hate it, used to go to school with glitter and oh, yeah, I wasn't happy. Not happy. And now he's like, oh, I need some metallic and I need some of this. And I'm like, do you now? Go and check him out. It's called um, 
Brush and Blade Studios. It's actually really good. He brought some of the models around over the weekend and it just blew my mind. I'm like, how on earth do you even see that? Yeah, very good. So we're all at it now. Alice with a painting. Jack's got his models. They're all at it. Right, so let's take this. Uh, do I want to do that crown while I'm there? Actually, the crown will work quite well there. So for the crown, I'm just going to go in with the champagne. I'm not going to go in with any brown first. I'm just going to go for it on here. And I am going to make this a little bit thicker. So what I'm doing is picking more paint up on my sponge. So it's got quite a thick layer. And then just dabbing off and bringing that paint in. Because I really want to be able to heat this up and create that look of metal. Maybe you went to the coronation, the king's coronation. This would be a great memory, wouldn't it? You could make a box and put all the little, all the memorabilia in a box and this could go on top of the box. How cool would that be? That would be fabulous. The USB would also be really good if you got the, um, I have to remember what they're all called, superior storage, the boxes that we did, the storage units that we did. This would be really good on that because you could really decorate it up with this. And remember, you've got 30 projects and you've got at least one stencil in each project. So you've got a minimum of 30 stencils. I will find out before we go on TV exactly what we've got on it, quantity wise. But you've got a lot to be going at with this. Right. So I'm just making sure there's no little bits that I've missed. And then I'm going to peel this off. And I'm going to dry this thoroughly and then I'm going to go back in with my brown paint on Big Ben. That looks fab, doesn't it? I love that. So that can go in there and stay there for now. Let's dry this off. So I'm going to do this really high heat now on the crown. And I don't think you'll be able to see this very clearly just because of the angle that we're working at. But I can tell you this is bubbling up. It's lovely. And it just gives the look of that metal. You know, when it's it's been hand crafted, it looks like that, it gives it that texture. I love it. So clever. I'm just really working that paint, get that heat going. You could use um, an embossing ink if you wanted to and put embossing powder over it. You could use your mixie on with your sponge. Just be careful with that because it is very runny um, and you don't want that to go under your stencil. But have a play around first on some scrap and just see what you get. And then for this, I'm just going to keep that heat gun moving because I don't want this to bubble at all. I want this flat. So I'm going to go back over this with brown paint in a minute. It could, it's twinkling. If you could see fizzy, that's what it looks like. Is. Right, so let's get our stencil back in. Now that's still quite wet, so I'm going to clean this off first. So, cleaning a stencil, I would normally put it under the tap, like we said earlier on, but I can't because that would mean stopping the video and we're not doing that. So, I'm just using a, a baby wipe. You can use a damp cloth, that's what I normally use at home because I'm not a big advocate for baby wipes and then I'm going to lift this up with my tweezers because it's got stencil spray on the back even that's cool look even that on that mylar is cool <laughs> I know every time I do this I think Leona would kill me wouldn't she if she could see me now just not using all this paint but I haven't got any card with me to pick it up, so she'll have to forgive me this time. <laughs> right, let's get all these little bits off here. And then let's just give it another wipe over and just dry it off. So dab it rather than dragging it. It's not too bad with this because there aren't any loose bits that could flick up. So we're all right with this stencil, but just be aware of that when you're doing it. I'm just going to wipe this off here because otherwise that will be all literally up my arms. I went into the kitchen the other day and Mick went, what on earth have you got on your face? I said, I don't know, what have I got on? He said, well, there's a bit of pink and a bit of yellow and a bit of blue. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's got used to ink and stuff over the years. He even got used to glitter, but paint is a new thing. It's like, it's paint everywhere. 
said to me the other day, he said, you're filming next week, aren't you? I said, yeah. I said, are you not going to go and get your nails done? I said, well, there's not much point really because they're going to end up get covered. I said, I'll go and have them done. Everyone will forgive me because we're all crafters. We're all the same. Right, let's bring this back in. Let's make sure that that's dry, hopefully. Just check that. See, I'm trying to find a bit of my hand now that hasn't got paint on it. <laughs> right, so back over with this. And then we're going to move it over to the left and down a bit. So we'll have a nice champagne. I'm sure it's called champagne. Let me just check that. No, platinum. Sorry, platinum. I get those two mixed up because they are quite similar. But champagne's a little pe bit peachier. So I'm now going to go back to the rest of that brown paint that I had before and I'm going to go back in and just stipple now. And then we'll see where we're at, see if it needs anything else because remember you're going to then go ahead and cut out your taxi or your London bus or whatever it is you decide to use. And then you're going to put that on there or it might be your photographs, it doesn't have to be. A London bus, you know, it can be photographs, it can be tickets and memorabilia, as we said. I do like the idea of this going on top of a box. I think it would look really smart. It could be a box that your other half keeps all the receipts in, or it's just something nice to look at, do you know what I mean? I like having stuff when I wander around my house, just different stuff to just stop and have a look at, especially when you've made it too. And then I'm just going to go in with another little bit of that dark brown, which is lovely. It reminds me of, it's not quite dark chocolate colour. It's like that dark to milk chocolate that you can get. But it is a lovely, lovely colour. I really do need to get some more stencil brushes because the bristles are just... Yeah, I think it's had a bit too much welly in the past. Right, so when I take this off now, we've got the opposite of what we had with the London. So you've got the brown with the gold just popping at the side of it, which is super cool. So if I just lift that up, you'll be able to see a little bit better that we've got the brown on there. And it's gone under the stencil a little bit, but you know what? It's fine because it's just that rustic look. So I'm quite happy with that, but there is just one thing that I want to do to it. And I'm just going to have a look and see what I've got. I'm going to dry this off first. And what I need to do is bring that bling into the rest of the canvas so it's a little bit more, it blends a little bit better. Because I've got lots of it in the middle, but I haven't got much of it around the outside edge. And to make it just re a really cohesive project, I'm just going to take this sponge again. And I'm just going to go around the edge like this. And I'm going around the edge first. So just like you would with a marker around the edge of your paper. There's still bits of rice paper on here. I'm going to just go over those because that actually adds quite a nice texture to it as well. So don't worry if you get odd bits around the outside. And then I'm going to take off a lot of this so there's hardly anything on. And I'm just going to go in, I'm just going to start to pull it down. And then this now is as much or as little as you want it to be, okay? This is now your decision. I can't make this decision for you because it's your style now. But just by very, I mean, it's like very, very, very gentle, very, very light touch and hardly any paint. You know, I haven't gone back into that paint at all yet. And then down the sides, I'm just gonna swipe up and down like that, long, nice sweeping movements. If you feel like you've got too much, grab a baby wipe or a damp cloth. And remember, these products are water-based. So if you feel like you've got too much, like that streak there, just wipe it off. It'll come off. Just wipe it. There's nothing wrong with doing that. There we go, you see, sorted. And then a bit more down here. So now you can add it and you can take it away. Look at that. A little bit less there, I think. So let's just get some of this in. Don't be scared. That's the key, I think, because if we, always, if we, were, if we never did what we were scared of, can you imagine what we'd miss out on in life? 
One of my friends, Sam, she's just done a parachute jump and I'm desperate to do one. So that might be my next thing. <laughs> Said it now, haven't I? Right, so just gonna I am literally just now wiping over the top of this canvas just to add that little bit look that little bit of sparkle and shine into that background. And then what I might do is just go around the edge of here with like a brown sharpie just to make that pop a little bit more. But I'm actually quite quite pleased with that. I quite like that as it is. Then you could go in and add your 3D embellishments on there. So for the um, the bus, I cut it out as it was in red. And then I used the, the platinum paint and I used, what colour was this? This was taffy for this colour. And then uh, dark brown again for the wheels. And then I went round the edges where the detail lines are. I went in with a brown pen just to highlight it. Then I sent this, this file of the bus into Canvas Workspace, ungrouped it and just used the outside edge. So I got rid of all those detail lines, deleted them off and just cut that whole thing out of our construction weight acetate. So it looks like this, look, like you've got the glass in the window, which is cool. And then I created a two millimeter outward offset line of that blank image, that solid shape, and just did that out of gray board and colored that in in the dark brown. But I just think it's a really different way of using your scan and cut, and also a different way of using your charisma because here we haven't cut it out and decoupaged it up. We've used it on rice paper, which I think is super cool. So quick recap on what we've used. We've used the dark brown, which is H018. Uh, this is a hybrid acrylic, just a regular hybrid acrylic from Cadence. Not that there's ever anything just regular about Cadence, I have to say. I've used the ultramarine, which is H038 for the Union Jack. I then used the crimson red, another hybrid acrylic, H053. And then I use this beautiful Dora metallic. Please don't leave your bottles like this. Please clean them before you put the lid back on. Otherwise, you'll struggle to get the top off. Do that properly after. But I've used that one, which is the Dora hybrid metallics, which are beautiful. And that is platinum. And I can only just see the code, but I think it's 7137. But that's the one that you want. Then on top of that, we used the... Decoupage Plus, the matte Decoupage Plus from Cadence. And we also used the stencil spray from Cadence. So go and have a play, see what you can come up with. Share it on our social media pages, please, so that I can see what you're up to, because I always like to see what you're doing. And then come back in a bit, we're going to do something completely different. So I'll see you soon. Bye. If you want to see more from Highlight Crafts, make sure you click the like button. Subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and click the bell icon to receive notifications of all our future content. You can also click here to see our latest video or click here to see more videos like this one.